Okay, good morning everybody. Um, I've uh, been at Maplin for about 12 months now and uh, uh, when I uh, started at Maplin, uh, I've been in various retail jobs, my wife said this was probably the worst job that I could have taken on from her perspective because as a someone that's uh, uh, been at Maplin and, and been a customer of Maplin ever since uh, Maplin started in the 70s, um, I'm a great fan of that and she said, uh, she said, I've been spent the last 20 years trying to keep you out of Maplin stores and now you've got an excuse to go there on a regular basis and now we're going to have a, a garage that's full of gadgets and also Sorts of, and all sorts of other, other sort of um, materials there. Um, I'm going to talk today about um, what I've been doing at, at Maplin and how we've taken um, um, the legacy estate that they've got, which, which had a lot of challenges, was very fragile. We're trying to build a digital uh, platform on top of that and trying to um, grow and expand that business um, and uh, move it into the digital age, how, how we've coped with those challenges and how we've tried to move that forward with what's, what's a relatively small kind of IT team. And I've probably been used to working with teams of you know, probably a couple of hundred people. Um, the Maplin team is less than 20 people. Well, it's not really an outsourced service either. They're actually running most of it themselves. So we're sort of looking at how, how you kind of grow that. And that includes the team that support the kind of 200 or so stores that we've got. So Maplin is a business about 250 million worth of sales, 230 stores, um, and um, um, uh, and as an internet proposition, which has which is about 15% of sales, which for me is probably lower than it should be. It should be probably around about 30% of sales. Um, just to um, sort of give you a little bit of background, I suppose the first thing I'd like to ask is how many of you know Maplin and love Maplin from around here? Yes, yeah, so it's fairly. Fairly sort of well known. I'll give you a quick, quick sort of potted history of it. It came out of the 1970s. It was a catalogue um, retailer then, um, and it was uh, uh, there were uh, electronics magazines were very popular then, and they used to have these electronic kits where you could build build things like synthesizers and so on. And, um, and Maplin got into the game of uh, producing the circuit boards and all the components and selling these little sort of packages. They then kind of expanded into stores. Um, and you'll see some of the, the early sort of stores there. Um, and, um, and really it was around being an electronics supplier rather than a technology provider. We still have Maplin Electronics in the name, but actually we see um, less people interested in the components that kind of make up devices and, and how you build devices, and more people interested in technology as kind of packaged solutions. I think people have got used to mobile phones, they've got used to apps, they've got used to quite sophisticated boxes like uh, TV uh, uh, recorders and so on that you can take and plug in, and, um, and therefore people want to buy sort of complete packaged solutions these days, which would, in our terms is we, we'd say that's technology. There's still an interest in the component part, but it's becoming a smaller part of our business, and we're now trying to uh, sort of move the emphasis a bit. And then if we look at the sort of stuff we've got today, um, we're kind of known as a place to come for innovative new products. And um, we try to, uh, we're relatively small compared to our, our competitors, which are the likes of Dixon's and John Lewis and so on. Um, and we try to be um, in early into a market and sort of grow and help develop a market. So. Uh, the, uh, the, uh, Christmas before last, we were the largest seller of drones. Um, that was really before they were sort of mass market. We've got a reputation for that. Uh, this year, we were in the hoverboards and the um, and, and the air wheels um, sort of market. You've probably seen seen a lot of the issues that there were with airboards with with the uh, Chinese um, uh, manufacturing quality not being quite where it is. Um, and we saw some interesting pieces there where that became mainstream much faster than uh, than, it, than it had done. Uh, historically. Um, but we're into um, car dash cams, there's something called the mechanoid on the left, a sort of Meccano robot that you can build. Um, and, and we try to sort of look at, look at new pieces of technology um, and, and get early, early in on those pieces. So that's the kind of um, uh, sort of space that we're kind of into. Let me just um, show you one of our adverts uh, at the start of this so you can get, get a, a sense of our focus which is trying to move um, into what we've got a really good reputation for, which is about being um, providing an excellent service. 
and we provide an excellent service generally in store because of the, the quality and experience of the colleagues that are there and the colleagues ability to, to, to provide advice about different sorts of devices. We've had some TV adverts that, that, that sort of focus on that a little bit, so I'll just show you one of those. Fed up with Wi-Fi Feng Shui? Ask Maplin. So it's about you know, solving problems for people, is the, the sort of space we're at. Um, we'll talk now about the, um, what I've kind of inherited in terms of a legacy estate, and then, and then the approaches that we've been using, which have been focusing on trying to keep the solution as lean as possible, trying to keep that team actually where it is, and build through partnerships or build through using, in our own mind, uh, sort of very, very packaged solutions, essentially cloud solutions, um, that we can kind of architect and pull together in a way that works. I don't think any of the stuff that I'm talking about is new. It's the sort of stuff that I've probably been doing for the last 20 to 30 years. Um, but um, what I think is different today is that you can actually buy a lot of these things off the shelf and you can plug them together very, very quickly and it's that piece that, that allows us to speed stuff up. And it's the stuff that we used to custom build an architect in the old days, but, but now, you, you know, now it's really, really fast. Um, the original legacy estate um, was built about 20 years ago. Um, my predecessor um, was, uh, would actually be doing an element of coding. In fact, he was involved in building some of these systems, so he knew them kind of intimately. Um, they were a whole series of bespoke systems, so we have some uh, we have very few packages in there. We've only got packages for Lawson for accounts and HR with Northgate. Um, everything else was hand-built and, and customised to um, Maplin's needs. So the EPOS terminals in store, um, the, um, the central general um, merchandising solution, it's all been hand-built. Now, it's, it's challenges that a lot of that's been built on technology from 15, 20 years ago. So it, it's, it's got some technology upgrade issues in it. Um, but, and, and it's got a plus and a minus. I mean, listening to the uh, panel session this morning, I, I had a lot of empathy for what, for what was being said there, because there is a lot of value in the, in, the, in the core legacy that's there. There's a lot of value in, in the heart of what's in here. But um, we, uh, um, you know, it's a, it's, a piece, it's a piece about trying to open that up so you can plug that in to a much more flexible kind of digital infrastructure that will sit on top of that. And that's the kind of journey that we've been looking to go on. Um, what have we done to start with? And this is sort of work that happened partially before I arrived and, and has happened over the last um, uh, 12 months, um, is to start with, we've, um, we took our local in-house built website and um, we implemented Hybris. Um, Hybris runs on um, SAP's uh, Hybris Cloud in, out of a data center in Germany. Um, and that uh, we just plug that into what we're doing. We implemented 365 across everywhere uh, with Outlook and, and the office services and stuff, very easy thing to do. It, it, quite powerful because it, it, particularly in a store distributed environment, it allows people to get access and share stuff and removes a lot of the overheads in, of running the, um, running the services that we've got. Um, and we've had um, Amazon Web Services doing a whole bunch of different things for, for quite a while. And we, we put applications on there and, and run them out from there. Um, we've recently, in the last uh, six months, built um, an enterprise data warehouse. It took us about two months to do that. Um, um, that was just spinning it up on, on Azure um, and, um, and then repointing some data feeds that we had um, that, were, that were feeding our current management information and building, um, building the new solutions. Took us another two months to deploy the management dashboard. So we've used Microsoft's Power BI uh, suite, um, and um, you know, and, and people are now walking around with the management information on their um, um, on their mobile phones. And what the store managers used to have to do was get, or the regional managers used to have to get the store managers to uh, take a picture of the screen and then email it to them on their to to get it on their mobile phone. And we can now give them um, real time sort of data from there. Um, contact center, we had a really old infrastructure that was all kind of, um, um, had a lot of, a lot of elements as, as you would have in a traditional um, contact center, um, you know, with the IVR, voice recording, um, a lot of the other outbound dialing. Um, uh, and um, again, we've taken all of that out. We've replaced that with a single solution, 